We're in Cumberland County, home of the Dukes. And Cumberland and Louisa have teamed up together to do this meeting today with their teachers and Cumberland students to talk about how they're going to change things up a little bit, have a little bit of new innovation ways they can do school. So they have some students going to be talking with the groups and some teachers are going to be talking today and just throw around some different ideas using Scott McCall's process and his steps. I'm pretty sure Scott is going to be talking to them too and giving them different ways on how to do it. So yeah, let's do this thing. New Orleans. Munich. Miami. Monheim. I remember teaching and it was all memorize this, that, and the other thing to regurgitate it back on the SOL test. But deeper learning really needs to get into not just the what, but the why and the how. And so, very good. Thank y'all. How, how do you try and change this 25 years of education where it's just give me the answer, move on, without uh, starting at the ground level at the elementary school um, and, and kind of going that way? So this, I mean, it seems like it really needs to be a community uh, bottom up while the top's going down as well. Uh, theory. So how, how do we get buy-in from everybody, especially with uh, teachers who lack uh, risk-taking ability <laughs> from another table? <laughs> Welcome to my life, man. That's the question I think about every day. So, you know, this is really a sort of a all-hands-on-deck conversation, right? Like, we have to have school leaders and teachers and librarians and parents and students and community members and <laughs> business partners, like everybody's got to be in, right? That's really the work of you know, our central office folks is to really help make those conversations happen, right? Is that how do we as a community try to figure out what do we want for our kids and what do we want for our graduates? Today was our second meeting. Um, and so um, it was a chance for the teachers to work uh, with the four shifts protocol, which was developed by Scott McLeod. And, um, and so they were using that and then working through a lesson plan that they had brought with them. Um, and then after they did that, um, they got to sit with a group of teachers, you know, that were both from Louisa and Cumberland, and then also students here from Cumberland, and then they got to have a conversation about what they really liked about the lesson and then how it could be changed as well. Well, from the beginning, we wanted to make sure students were included. Um, after the Virginia Innovation Network was held in Chesterfield and we heard from students from Fluvanna, uh, uh, I think it made an impression on everyone from Cumberland and Louisa, our team, that we need to make sure we include students. Mm -hmm. But we made sure students actually were the, the people that recruited the teachers that are a part of this. But today was really the first time we were able to get students um, in the protocol, the tuning protocol conversations and providing feedback because we think that's important. And I think what we heard at the end of today from teachers yeah. is why don't we include them more? And that's from teachers now saying that. So mm -hmm. um, that's been important to us. The second half it was really easy because it was just step by step. Of the and real it was, world. Yeah. Right. Right. So I was thinking like you could do like things. sculptures too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. 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 It's like, okay, Malia, you're good at this. You test it out on this. And Alexis isn't really good on it. But Alexis is amazing at this. We're going to be living in a world that you guys create. So it's, it's important to we not only get your input, but listen to what you have to say and apply that to what we're doing now. Um, because ultimately, this, this is your world. You know, it's, it's up to you guys to create the environment that you guys are going to impact. I like the fact that they care about us in our learning process. You know, they actually want to work with us and just better ourselves and better our learning stuff. So. What ideas are you sharing with each other and what ideas are the students like incorporating into it? I like this experience because we get to see how the teachers thought process because like sitting in the classroom sometimes we wonder why are we doing this? Yeah, definitely. So to have the teachers kind of sit here and explain what they're doing and it's for our best benefit is pretty cool. It's been awesome to watch this, watch you guys collaborating with one another um, and just jumping in with both feet. As we talked about before at the beginning of this today, you know, you got to put yourself out there a little bit to do this. 
and we're still figuring it all out and it's going to take some time but that's what we're here for to support each other and I see that happening all over the place I love it. There's so much that our kids do well, and our teach our staff does well, and our community is great. And so to look at a test score and think that's the only thing we're about is wrong. And so I've really had to change my opinion and what I judge as important myself. And, the, and so I have to make sure, like this year, the three schools will be accredited without conditions. But I have to make sure I don't go out and celebrate that too much. I'm proud of that. I acknowledge that. But you're not going to see us having big parties because, to me, that's not what's important anymore. What's important is do our, do our students have the skills necessary to go out and be good people? And do we provide them opportunities and access to what they want to do? And are they owning their own learning? So that's more important to me than being accredited now. And so it's really just taken a big, big mind um, set shift for me. So can you give me a rundown about like what's going on right now? Yes, this is a, a new endeavor for us here at Cumberland. This is actually an internship fair. It's similar to a career fair in that the students are learning, uh, meeting employers and learning about their career paths. But what they're actually, the purpose is, is for our juniors and seniors to actually interview with employers and actually obtain an internship with them, whether it's paid or unpaid. So we hope by the time that this day is concluded that our employers have interns who can meet their needs and our students will learn about career paths before they graduate from high school. They're going to be evaluated just as if they were actually employed, yes. And so they can take that evaluation, if it's a good evaluation, and actually put it on a resume, attach, you know, put it on a, a college application, scholarship application, okay? So it's the idea that this, hopefully, what they learn in the workplace here in the next couple years will help them for the next steps after they graduate. So at the YMCA, what type of qualities do you look for in an intern before you accept them? So basically, we're looking for people that really have like qualities as far as being a leader, being an example for other people, being inclusive, really being able to make other people feel comfortable when, when they walk through our YMCA doors. We look for a very detailed oriented person uh, because there are a lot of things that our manufacturers tell us that we have to do to work on our medical equipment and if you aren't very detail oriented and you skip a lot of steps then you could actually hurt some patient. So that is one of the main things that we look for. Some of the qualities that I look for um, is somebody to be hardworking, passionate, um, dedicated, um, and eager to learn. Um, those are the top qualities that I'm definitely looking for in the students here. You know, punctual, um, great communication skills, um, leadership skills, those types of things. Since it's connecting to that, so when you have the controller, like, we'll talk to this. And Fine, but that's okay. We're going to mount it. So, these teeth right here. All right, keep going. Go down. Bring it down. Oh, that's so cool. It's really important to me to give students a reason why. And I know that when any time that I have discussed, whether it's the Pythagorean theorem or measurements or the coordinate plane, I've been really careful to give a reason, an instance in real life, where you're going to use this for this reason and be specific enough to where they can say this is not some random two trains traveling towards each other it you know the the strange word problems from my childhood that made they made sense but they were obviously fictional whereas we can provide them with a real life this is how you're going to use this this is what you're going to do with it um, give them a, something that they can really <coughs> grab a hold of. I, I've had more students ask, can I 3D print something? Because they designed this thing. They want to see their thing come to life and take their thing and snap it into this. If we just grabbed something off the internet and threw it to the printer, that would be neat, but it wouldn't be the same as I made this, I measured this, I designed this, I sent it to the printer, and if all goes well, it fits perfectly. If it doesn't go well, then we can have we sit down and do that troubleshooting process and say where did where did this go wrong? Trying to find it, trying to find it. No pressure or anything. So this is your helmet that you have to wear and has the VR settings in it? Yeah. Whoa. So what did you just do before we got here? What were you doing before when we were here? Well I was on the website looking at stuff to print in the 3D printers. 
So what type of stuff were you blogging? Well, at first I wanted the flat practice plate, and now I'm trying to get the settings right so I can try that. Okay, that seems pretty cool. And you have different types of lead welding settings? Yes. I, I had, I, we were using this for during class time, but I wanted to try this. This was way harder. It asked a lot of them in terms of setting the machine up properly. So that's probably what the machine teaches us just as much as your actual welding position is setting the machine up based on what parameters it gives you. So it, it asks you to set your gas flow, your amperage, your voltage, your, your wire feed speed, all of these features that would be on a real machine, it asks you to set those up. Uh, and if you get it wrong, it will let you know, mm -hmm. hey man, you didn't get that right. Go back. Go back, do it again. So the, the purpose of this class is to investigate uh, a wide variety of careers uh, across the spectrum and sort of look around and see if we can find something that sets sets a fire in each individual student's chest and find them something that gets them excited, that keeps them up in the middle of the night and say, I can do this this way, or I can change the way I was doing it and do something differently. Uh, it is also an opportunity for them to find things that they don't want to ever do again. Uh, I had one student after uh, we did a week in programming and she sat down with me at the end of the week and said, I never want to do that again. So, That's great. That's something you know now. Now you know. I don't want to do that. Uh, and that's a powerful thing to have learned uh, in middle school, to be able to say, this is not for me. And maybe revisit that decision later, but at least you won't waste a huge amount of time in high school on programming classes if that's not your thing.